furniture shop with Adam who runs the furniture shop and is a, a master master craftsperson and we're here with empty nest uh, uh, cabinetry uh, that's the sink cabinet over there and this cabinet goes where in empty nest? Well these cabinets come together okay this one's a little deeper than that one but this is one big galley that goes on the passenger side of the vehicle basically from um, the side slider all the way to the bathroom bulkhead there's a rear bath in this van. And the, these clients had some cool, <laughs> some cool objectives and visions for this. They told Adam, we want a, a wine rack for, they tell you how many bottles or? It was up to us, how many ever we could fit. Uh, we had a very tight space because the wheel well comes in right here. So we are left with a little bit of space in the transition where the cabinets come together. And uh, the objective was just to get as many wine bottles in there as we could. And I think we got six. One, two, three, four, five, yeah, six, six bottles. So this is uh, basically an insert. The bottles are canted back so they don't fall out when you're going down the road. And it's all upholstered in a, in a vinyl that's uh, non-skid. Uh, so the, bo the bottles should stay put, we hope, anyhow. And even against the back wall, there, there's uh, there's a cushion. So you, there's almost no way to make these rattle. And, uh, but if they're quick access, you know, you get right after it. <laughs> well, it was a little bit challenging because of the wheel well, like I said, and then there's space behind this that we had to maintain for all the mechanical, all the plumbing that needs to come through here from the sink, all has to pass behind the scenes and, and fit in there just right. I don't know if there's any storage objectives for these particular drawers, although there's a slide out trash bin. So there's going to be two of these custom made cans. Uh, we're still working on the lid for this. So these cans are gonna drop in. Uh, they'll be powder coated, probably black. And even underneath these trash cans is where the heater core is going to be. And there's mechanical stuff uh, down below. The coffee pot, which is also still a little bit in process. So this will be able to extend out and the hopper for the water is uh, very accessible. Slide it right back in. Uh, the pass-through cabinet, which we've replicated a number of times. Uh, spice shelves were chosen. And then the, uh, the pass-through itself. So it gives you a nice little work table outside, and, and this protrudes right out of the side slider. Everyone is different, and the design is different. And, uh, you know, when we start with some of these uh, uh, cabinet uh, and other choices of colors with clients, we say, hmm, now this is going to work out. And then when we get it together, it's always amazing. Sometimes it seems like a rough mix, but yeah, it comes together. Yeah, this is really looking cool. So uh, let's go over and take a look at the bed in this thing. All right, now also it. unique. We've created the expandable, or we like to call it the slat bed, a number of times. Uh, but in this case, the client objective was to have an expandable slat bed like this that will extend all the way to the galley. And they wanted the head of the bed to be articulating uh, electronically. And there's also going to be a director's chair style flip up headboard that retains pillows when they're, when they're in the sleeping position. Uh, but this bed, as I've said, we've, we've created the, the expandable slat bed a number of times. And this will expand to just over four feet, about four and a half feet. And then electronically, uh, this portion of the bed will articulate. So they'll be able to sit up and, and view their TV and uh, just sit up in bed. Uh, so this was challenging because we haven't split the slat bed like this and made it articulate ever. Uh, we've, of course, we've done the slat bed and we've done articulating beds. Uh, but the combination of mechanics in this bed was challenging, to say the least. I'm always so proud of these things, when it's, even when I don't have a whole lot of direct design input. It's complicated, it looks simple now that it's done, and that's the, that's the whole objective. If it's not simple, it's probably not going to work well, it's not elegant, 
But when we get done with, with Adams, all of his churning and other people's input, if it's, if it's elegant, if it's simple, we, 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 uh, we accomplish what we wanted to for the client. I'll, I'll just give props to everybody on the team. About a half a dozen of us came together. We all had great ideas. We all contributed to this design. Uh, and all, all I really did was put it on paper and, and facilitate it. Travis, tell me what we're looking at here. What we're looking at here is uh, the butcher block countertop for empty nest. Uh, it's made out of a couple different species of wood, uh, ash, oak, uh, cherry, maple, uh, and we, we distressed it um, to look like a barn wood. You can't really tell from here, but there are uh, saw curves and chatter marks and and handsaw marks, and we're gonna leave some of the burn marks and knots, and and hopefully make it look like uh, our sample seats over here. They wanted it to look like they sent pictures of barn wood, um, cool. and said they liked the multi colors, and they liked it to look old. It still has to be a functioning countertop. They have to be able to use it and not get splinters, and they have to be able to wipe it up. Um, I think it'll work out well for them. All right, can't wait to see you. Thank yep. you. The stage we're at now, when we shot the other video, I only had half of the uh, countertop glued up. So I glued up the other half, we uh, cut to the measurements, put in the radiuses, cut out the sink. It's going to nest into the sink so it, so it can travel and it won't move around. It'll disappear. And we'll have to have a cutout for the uh, faucet. But uh, that's the stage we're at. This client uh, had some a little bit unusual request, but they wanted a special finish. Can you talk a little bit about how they wanted it to look? So this is multiple species of woods. Um, we did, I don't know if the camera can see it, but we did, uh, we left in the saw kerfs and the planing marks. You can't feel it obviously, but it's smooth to the touch. This will still get one more coat. This was stained. Um, then there was a seal coat. Then there was a glazing process that I did. And now this is the first top coat. It'll get a second top coat and it should be nice and water resistant. So this looks like cherry and uh, is that ash there? The next yep. board and then cherry again. Is this another This, this ash? is maple. Oh, this is maple. Uh, okay. and this the backsplash is, is maple. Yeah, cherry, ash, oak and maple. So they had a really powerful vision of what they wanted here. And how, how many samples did you do? I did uh, six, I think. Six samples. And, and, and it was the sixth one that they chose? It was the sixth one, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how it goes. You yeah. keep doing it until, until we find something that they like. <laughs>